Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to my video on the MIST FPGA computer demonstrating the Amiga core. Now I will be focusing on the Amiga 500. The MIST can do a lot more, it can also do the Amiga 1200, the AGA core, it can do HDF files and WHD load and all, all that kind of stuff. But if you're new to the Amiga, that might actually confuse you more than get you excited. So we're gonna focus just on the plain Amiga 500 and how to load disk image, disk games in the ADF file format. So I will walk you through all the options, how to configure the SD card, how to run games, of course. I'll talk about monitor options, LCD monitors, but also CRT monitors and, and what you need to watch out for. And at the end, lots of gaming footage um, filmed directly off the CRT, but also captured directly with a VGA capture card. So that's it. Without further ado, enjoy this video. So this is the main MIST website where you can get the Amiga core, but also the latest firmware. And do check out these two videos, they're actually mine. This one explains what the MIST FPGA computer is all about and compares it with emulation. And this one is the first setup guide. So if you want a proper overview of the, what the MIST computer is and how it works, and I'll also test the Amiga 64 core in this video. So you wanna click on this link up here to get to the area where you can download the cores and the firmware. Click on MIST binaries and then you'll see, you'll see cores and firmware here. If you click on cores, we have a choice of going with the Minimig AGA. That one is around three months old. That one is uh, newer and focuses more on the AGA stuff. And we've got the older Minimig core. It's around two years old, but I actually found that one to be a little bit more compatible with the older games. But some games work better on the Minimig AGA. So that's basically where you download everything. And now I'm gonna show you how to copy the files across to the SD card and get everything up and running. So here we are, we've got the SD card on an, in an SD card reader on the right hand side. I label it Amiga 500 and we've got all the files that we need. The first thing we need is the core. So this is the Minimic core, the two year old one, which worked a little bit better for me with the uh, games I tried in this video. And after copying it, just rename it to core.rbf which will uh, make the MIST load this core by default. You can have several cores and also then change the cores within the on-screen display menu, but you need one file that is named core.rbf initially to tell the MIST computer which one to load. The firmware, if you have not got the latest firmware, we're also gonna cross that, um, copy that across with the file ending .upg. There's one with a different file ending, so you gotta watch out for that. We also rename this one and call it just firmware. And then we need the kickstart ROM. I've got the uh, Amiga Forever because that has all the kickstart ROMs. It's got all the workbench disks and um, some games and demos. And it's, uh, yeah, it gives you legal access to all of that. But we all know that you can just download this from the internet. If you are using Amiga Forever, also copy the ROM key file, which uh, is the decryption key. And we right click on the ROM and just call it kick.rom. And now we'll need some games. So I'm copying a game folder across and inside that folder are a couple of games in the ADF Amiga disk file format in the floppy disk format. And that's it, we're ready to go. So we're just gonna eject the SD card and I'll show you in the next part how to use the mist. So this is the SD card we prepared earlier. So we're gonna insert it into the mist and turn it on. So the idea of this part is I'm going to walk you through all the uh, menu options and basically how you use the MIST and the Amiga core. So if everything works correctly, you should see the uh, Amiga Workbench logo from the Kickstart 1.3. I'm just going to talk about these buttons. The first button is configured as a, a reset button and for every MIST core, the buttons do something slightly different. So you have to read the documentation. So the first button resets the unit. And the set, second button will access the on-screen menu, but you can also press F12 on the keyboard so they do the same thing. So let's press F12, and this is the on-screen menu. We can uh, insert some floppy disks and start playing games, but I'll walk you through the other options first. There's a turbo speed for the floppy disk. Um, some games work with it, some games don't. So for the time being, I'll leave it on. 
And you can also load some hard, hard HDF files for the hard disk, but I'm not going to cover this in, uh, in this video, otherwise it would be too much to talk about. I'll do that in another video when I talk about the AGA core. If we go right, we can see here we can load configurations. So once you've uh, tweaked all your settings and you lock them down, you can save it as default and then every time you turn on the unit, the default settings will be saved. A small configuration file will actually be written to the SD card. So if you want to uh, start from, from scratch, you just delete that configuration file. And you've got um, five configs here you can play around with. But the first thing we're going to do is check out upgrading the firmware. So it'll tell you that this firmware is currently installed. And this is the firmware on the SD card. They are identical, so there's really no reason to upgrade. But I'm just going to show you how it works. You just uh, confirm the firmware update. And it, it just doesn't take too long. And there you go. It just does a reset and you've got the latest firmware. So usually just read the documentation. So if there's a, a new firmware out, it doesn't hurt to, to go with that. Okay, back in the menu. Let's have a look at the chipset settings. So we're focusing on the Amiga 500. So make sure the CPU is set to the 68,000. The other, there are some other options here. The turbo leave that on none, video PAL, um, most of the games are for the PAL standard but you can play them in NTC mode if the game is compatible. Chipset leave that at OCS Amiga 500 but there are some other options to play around with but I found this one the most compatible one. Okay we're getting out of this and into the memory settings. So the uh, standard Amiga 500 had half a megabyte or 512 kilobyte, uh, kilobyte of memory and the memory expansion was also half a half a megabyte and the fast memory we turned that to none we go out of this and then we have the video settings uh, we can turn on some filters they basically uh, make the image a little bit blurry to mimic what a CT monitor does so personal preference really play with some uh, load some games and see what it looks like and the scan lines, of course, I like my scan lines. You can have dim scan lines or really black ones. On the video, the black ones don't really uh, come through nicely because it makes the picture really dim. So I'm going to go with the dim scan lines. Now, uh, later in the video, the scan lines won't really show up uh, in, this, in this part. But later when I show all the gameplay footage, you can see the scan lines a lot better. Okay, I think we've configured all of that. So... I'm going to go out and save that configuration and we can now play a game. So we go to the menu and select the first floppy disk and I'm going to play some R-Type. You can see that the mist starts uh, loading the, from the floppy. Now some games use more than one floppy disk and you can actually uh, load them uh, in both floppies. So let's put, for example, Tark into the second disk into the second floppy drive and the first disk into the first floppy drive. But not every game supports that. Some games you still have to uh, swap, swap all the floppies.
And that's pretty much how you use the Omega Core on the Mist. Now in terms of compatibility, I actually got every single game I tried working. I did have to change a few cores. Some games worked better uh, or worked at all on the newer core, but some worked on the two year old uh, Minimi core. So you just have to uh, muck around a little bit. So just a few words about using an LCD monitor. Now some monitors apparently have difficulties displaying the 50 hertz signal. Now a lot of the Amiga games use the PAL standard, so the mist will output a 50 hertz signal. We can see it here, 31 kilohertz, 50 hertz. The monitor I'm using is an Asus VB198T. It displays it just fine. Now you might be tempted to use the auto adjust button so I'm just running that right now. And the image seems fine, everything is centered. And this part will be a little bit difficult to show, but I've done some uh, capture and I will put it in the video. You can see some uh, vertical lines going, but also in games you will see a weird uh, effect that some parts, some parts of the game move at, at different speeds. It's a bit hard to, to explain. And that is because the clock setting is off. So you actually have to go into the menu and adjust the clock setting manually. It might be in my monitor, it's under focus. On your monitor, it might be in a different setting. And there's the clock. So let me just go down, down here, yep. And every monitor is different. For me, a clock setting of around 93 gets rid of all these uh, artifacts and I'll get really smooth scrolling. Now you have to then go back out and change the position of the monitor so just a little bit to the left and every game is different so you some games are a little bit to the left some games are a little bit to the right so you might have to readjust that but that's an issue i ran into um without adjusting the clock the image looked really bad so if you notice that the scrolling is not smooth and you you get the glitches that uh, you can see in the video uh, just play around with the clock uh, the best way to do this is find a game that continuously scrolls. For example, Alien Breed, you can uh, run around and it's a very smooth scrolling. And then it's really easy to find a clock setting that fixes this issue. And here we've got the Mist running on a CRT PC monitor. And that's one of the benefits. You don't need to find uh, a special Amiga monitor with the 15 kilohertz. You can just use a standard PC VGA monitor and you'll find you'll find them a lot easier uh, to find. Now let me tell you the image is absolutely gorgeous, lovely black levels, smooth scrolling, the scan lines, everything is exactly how it should be. Now you might be a little bit skeptical but if you see this uh, for real, like if you hook up a VGA monitor and you see this the first time, uh, I think you'll agree and you'll be very happy with the purchase. Now at the end of the video um, where I'm gonna show all the gaming footage. There is some CRT uh, footage as well. So I filmed it off the screen and hopefully that CRT retro awesomeness comes across in the video. And that's really it for this video. So to finish it off, I've put all the gaming capture that I've done for this video uh, now at the end of the video. Now there's a lot of it, so I'm gonna use uh, time markers down in the description for you to select the, the game that you're interested in. And there'll be a mix of uh, direct VGA capture from the capture card, but also filmed straight off the CRT monitor. <laughs>
Ready. My two